so we're down here today, gone to a mark near Oberth. So we've come down here specifically to have a go. We've been down this mark before, drops off, it's flat calm. We'll hopefully try and get a cod out. I mean, it's potluck for us as well, guys. We don't do a lot of research into these areas and stuff before we come up. And um, it's exactly the same. All you can do is look what's in front of you. So we've got down here early over low water and try and put your baits in, in those spots. Hopefully uh, to obviously pick up a cod or two. Now we're fishing a match today, me and Joseph. I'm using two rods, Joseph's using one rod. Wayne's using one rod, Joseph's brother's using one rod, and Nick's using one rod. So we've got three rods between us each. The idea is, is to pull a few fish out, have a bit of fun on camera. So my intentions are, because I'm fishing two rods, I'm going to hit one out to the horizon over the back of the breakers. You can see it's shallow off here and there's a trough in close. So I'm going to put one rolling lead into that trough on the left hand side here. And I'm going to bang one out to the horizon and get him right over the back of those breakers into that deeper water. Let's see if we can get a few fish out. Spider it or not. It's time one onto this uh, main line here at the minute. Right. Because of where I'm fishing at the minute, and I know that deeper water's out past that, um, that's, it's like a little sandbar here in close. I'm going to try and get my baits out to the horizon. So anything to help me get that bit of distance. So I'm using uh, the uh, Dawa Millionaires. STs basically to uh, try and um, make it work. So the clipper led onto this and have a quick cast. It's a brand new line. And it's the first time using these reels, so I need to set them in really. I've put the pinion supports in, I've had upgraded upgraded um, handles put onto them. So uh see if I can get one out quickly. Nice. Getting to these, used to these rods as well, because I've been using the um, 435 Sulcron rods, uh, extreme tournaments, a lot stiffer compared to these. So it's the timing really, so that's on max. Max break in. All right, let's take one down a minute and have a little cast. Lovely. They're running lovely. Folks, so uh, gonna uh, put a squid bait, squid and crab, I reckon. Um, I'm gonna put it at the back of the breakers there now, just literally bang it out to the horizon. So I've got an ST on that one there now, but um, just gonna do it just to see if we can get a ray out. High water's about eight o'clock tonight, so uh, we'll give it a few hours, see if we can get a few fish out for the camera. We've got a busy day tomorrow again. Up and down the coastline doing some filming of venues and stuff for you lot. Um, but uh, yeah, so. 
going to basically do a little bait up. I'm not going to do a massive bait. And then, I'm just going to wrap this around as so. Squid and crab. See what happens. Okay, get the get the hook. Bring that down through. All the way down as far as I can get him out. Like that. Make sure the hook's out proud. And then uh, literally bait elastic up, the, up to the top of the shank. It feels wrong baiting size baits up like I am at the minute. Because obviously where I'm, in my neck of the woods, I'd be using a lot bigger baits than that. The main thing is, lock the bottom of the bait in. Make sure that hook point's proud. So the bait don't slide anywhere. And I'll lock that down into place, like so. That one's ready to go out now. All right, so I've got another half a crab there. Got some legs and stuff, what I put into the side. Definitely need a baiting towel. I'll get this one cast out and then uh, I'll, I'll put a pulley rig on the other. I'm just gonna clip that one down now and uh, try and send him as far as I can that way over the back of the breakers into that deeper water. Joseph's pans around a camera when I'm gonna cast out in a minute. You'll see when the breakers are starting to hit, I wanna try and get past that. So really you're looking at 160 yards at the minimum at the minute to get yourself right out in that deeper water. Hit the floor with that one. <laughs> Hard to cast with that steep bank, but I got away with it. Oh, I'm gonna bang this one out now. I think I'm gonna have to put bigger lead on this, unfortunately, because that one there's gone sky left. So, uh, I'm just, I'll just get another lead quickly. Here we are. Lovely. Pulley rig on this one. Just mix them up a little bit. Hopefully, we can get that out there as well. So we get a fish out. My line has gone right down to the right at the minute. I've only got five ounce lead on that. They bring us in quickly. Bit of weed on there at a the minute. I think it's just weed.
nightmare. It's going to happen though. All that rough weather yesterday. And uh, it's just unsettled the seabed, hasn't it? But um, can't see my trace on there at the minute. It's that horrible stringy weed as well, which is uh, not what we want. No, bait's still there. I'm tangled up. Probably going to shorten that trace. We'll bang this one out the horizon in a minute, and then we'll uh, we'll sort this out. Well, I'm gonna do a crab bait up here now. Just lay them out over the crab. Seen a couple of uh, locals just run into last year's winner. Uh, not last year's winner, the year before's winner. And uh, they've come for a long walk along the stretch of coastline from where they live and just walked and walked and walked, just trying to find troughs and, and bits and pieces. They said they haven't been out recently, so they just said they were uh, just coming out to do a bit of exploring, really. But um, it's what you've got to do. It's a lot of the locals will be doing that and a lot of the travelling anglers. So, uh, as I said to many of you before, it's definitely worth getting out there and trying, you know what I mean? Even if it's a case of going out for a 20 minute walk. At least that 20 minutes you sort of see what's in front of you rather than blind because when you get down in there in the morning even if it's dark early morning you tides flooding anyway the high tides quite early in the in the into the match so uh it is it does make a difference knowing where where you're fishing over that spot on part of the tide is it coming over up of the of the flood and then you're fishing the ebb then so um it's making the most of that flooding tide i think but uh, i'm gonna get this one out here now Must have stayed there then. We're here, we're having a go.
You know what, folks? So, after the rough conditions yesterday, we got what I know, like to know as clotheslines. It's just weed, which um, we need to really let it, let it, the tide just take it away now. But um, I've had three casts, and we've had that, well, me and Nick's just had a white in each, and um, I've just bought this one and lost another one in the surf as I was bringing it up through, because I could literally had to walk back up the beach to stop the, um, the weed from wrapping up through my top eye. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not fantastic at the minute, weed-wise, but I'm sure that'll start dropping away as it comes closer to the weekend now. But you're gonna expect it. You had a big, big easterly blow um, the, the past couple of days, and uh, this is the outcome of it. But uh, it's horrible stuff as well. It's not, it's not even stuff you can tap off your line. I'm having to literally pull it off and uh, yeah, a bit of a nightmare really, but we're gonna give it an hour or so, see if we can get a cod out. Me, me and Nick specifically targeting cod here today, and uh, Wayne's going for white in and flatties, and Joseph and Joseph's brothers trying to pull a ray out. So between us all, we're trying to get a mixed species for it really. But uh, yeah, that's the update from uh, live from Albra. Reels are running smooth. All right, so I've gone down the one rod here in a minute. The reason being, the weed is an absolute nightmare. We knew it would, would be probably be the case from previous experience when it's been rough before, but um, it's like washing lines at the minute. So just gone down the one rod each. A few whiting out, well, add out to between us here this evening. Uh, should have got it on video really, but got a nice picture of me and Nick with them. Wayne's had a few out down that end. It is a bit a tad chilly. But um, to be honest, it's only on my face a little bit. My hands are now um, cold. But um, Nick's out with his gloves on. And uh, yeah, we'll have a little nap with Nick as well in a minute. But um, it's uh, overhead breeze, westerly wind. And uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can see a cod out. I don't, I don't know, it's one of them. From what the locals are telling me, it's, they're quite thin on the ground, the bigger fish. So it would be the smaller cod which would be caught. But, I've heard that a lot in the past, and then suddenly eight and nine pounders have been pulled out, so you never know. And uh, yeah, it's one of the joys of the comp, isn't it? Right, so here we have my partner in crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you could say that. It's been an interesting one so far, hasn't it? It's good, actually, you know what I mean? Um, it's cold. It's it cold. is cold. Got gloves on. As they call us, the Southern Fairies because um, we do feel the, the I don't know what it is, but down on Ecklewood, it's quite warm. Yeah, it is, yeah. You come it up is. here, as soon as you get up here, and you can feel it on the way up, me and Joseph got out to go to the garage and fuel up, fuel up and we were like, blimey. <laughs> it is cold. But um, I suppose you get used to it, didn't you? It's one of them. Well, this is north, isn't it? So you got the, you got the North Sea there, and uh, it's known as being very, very cold. Yeah. Especially in the winter. But we're sort of at the, uh, it's been up. It's I don't been know. We're at the end of winter, beginning of spring, though, aren't we? We're, so... um, it's been colder before. Oh, God, yeah, mate. I've fished here in the snow. snow and me. You yeah. know, Bob was a younger man then, and I could handle it. You could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling a bit at the moment, but uh, yeah, it's just nice to be fishing, guys. It really is. And um, like Andy said, we, I got told by a local yesterday that there's a lot of whiting being caught up and down the coast. And like Andy said, a cod could come out of anywhere, really. Literally anywhere. There's always, well, I you say, rumours flying around that this is going to fish better or that's going to fish better. Really, I think all the competitors have just picked their spot and hope for the best. You've got a lot of this coastline, and I, I, I really believe it, that it's probably not fished just because it's so hard to get to certain areas and that. Yeah, and a lot yeah. of people won't bother with the walks and stuff. So a lot of anglers might walk along here for the first time and think, you know what, that looks pretty good, I'll give it a go. And strike lucky. I mean, we were just out here a minute ago and we bumped into not last year's winner, but the yeah, year, 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 before, year before. And him and his mate was literally taking a walk and they've literally walked for miles and miles along the beach to get to, just to have a look over low water to see where they think they want to fish. And they were, they were actually looking for poles of weed on the beach. That's what they were looking for. He told me that. You but, know why? Um, because of... Yeah, well, we've pulled in a fair yeah. bit of wheat today. Anyth but, anything to what comes down through, you get all the pits and stuff like that with the holding, 
And yeah. um, especially where we are at the minute, all the way up through, you can see a, a, a gully at the, in, in close. Especially over the, to the, the, the top of the tide. Yeah. So I'm not sure what time the tide is. I'm sure it's about 10 o'clock on the Saturday. I might be wrong, around in the morning anyway. But you're, the first couple of hours is, is, is very important to try and get the fish out. Be yeah. right on the ball, get your rigs already set up. I mean, you can get down this. Oh, what I normally do is I get a tray and I'll, I'll bait all my rigs up ready and just cover them, put them in the shade. That way you're concentrating on your rod tips because there's nothing worse than missing a bite. And we've all done it before, but in a competition like this, you can't afford to miss a bite, can you? No. No, you can't afford to miss a bite for the simple reason being the prize tables there looking at you, you know? Yeah. And that's what you're here for. You're here to try and win. Yeah. Every single angler that turns up for the Saturday and Sunday wants to win and it goes it's not always about the big fish i know it's the single biggest fish guys but if you can get two decent fishing over both days you've yeah. got a real chance of winning it and i mean when i mean even like a couple of three or four pound fish you know i mean you've got a real good chance of winning it because you never know if anybody someone might catch a big cod on the saturday but like wayne did he caught one on the saturday he never caught nothing on the sunday or no. vice versa no sorry that he never caught someone on the saturday he caught it on the sunday yeah he comes but third, if he, he? yeah if he come third overall but winner of one day but you need to back it up so if there's no big fish caught and you've got two decent fish over both days you're in with a chance anything can happen with this event yeah it's one of the joys yeah. of it you know what i mean and um i know a lot of people say about local knowledge and stuff like that but all the locals i've met i know you get you'll get you're always going to get guys what don't want to give stuff away in that but yeah you I can't blame, you I, can't yeah, but I, to be honest i haven't found that up here 99 percent of the people i've spoke to have always been very friendly always been willing to help out even when we used to fish it back in the early days and i'm not, I'm not a lot of the guys were like the traveling anglers from what come from plymouth and they come up from the western supermare and that these guys cornwall all over the place all over the all different parts of the, of the country and europe really yeah and they're always willing to help out and they'll say, oh, do you know what, I hear that's fishing well, because they, they stay in friends with the, a lot of the locals and stuff. Become, they become friends, don't they, a lot of I them, think, what yeah, we, we, we see. I think a lot of the communication is through uh, the Facebook pages, yeah, which is a great help, you know. Um, like you say, you, 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 you've got old friends and you make new friends. It's brilliant, it really is. It's about the best competition in Europe, you know. It's the biggest competition in Europe. And um, I just love seeing all the guys there, it's great, it really is. And on all Thursday night this week, the hall will be packed. You'll have all your scratch fishermen coming up because they'll all want to do the flatty bash, which uh, George Smith has done wonders with, hasn't he, Andy? Yeah. Absolutely wonders. Uh, unreal, absolutely. You know? To see it grow like it has is unreal. Yeah. Because it, it, it's become, a, it, at the beginning, it was just like an event where they put it was, on. Well, it was one beach, yeah. wasn't it? And, and, and the back of the at, camp. Back of the camp, yeah. yeah. And it, it is amazing how, how they see it grow and grow and grow and grow. And it's become a three day event now. And, yes. and a lot of people come only to fish the flatty bath. That's right, yeah. Because they got to work on Saturday and Sunday. And it goes, people travel for miles to come and fish the flatty bath. And it's absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a great event, it's very well run. Um, it's always done fair. They obviously, if you're disabled, you get uh, the they have spots for the disabled anglers, yeah. but they haven't got to walk too far. Yeah, exactly. um, they set into zones and stuff. There's no picking your zones and stuff. Everything's just picked out of the. You, you know I mean everything's done fairly, and um, I think it works and people enjoy it. I do because it puts a smile on George's face. As well, yeah. it? Not that he needs to smile. He's smiling all the time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Brilliant competition. Brilliant venue. And what are you? It's going to be crowned the overall champion on Sunday. One of so you. Good luck yeah. to all of you. And the golden ticket, guys. Don't forget the golden, yeah, ticket. golden ticket. Norway. It's, it's Three trips to Norway. unreal. They've spent out a lot of money to give away this golden ticket this year. And all you need to do is purchase a ticket. Yeah. And if your ticket gets called out, you need to make sure you're in the hall. You need because, to be in the hall yeah. when they call the it, ticket. Muggins yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Muggins, yeah. yeah. Um, they did a golden draw one year, I can't remember when Mecca's it was. Camp it was. About over 10 years ago, I think. 2000, 2009 it was. 2009, there you go. And uh, I wasn't in the hall. I was out yapping in some other bar watching the comedian that he they was had si at the Mecca's Singing camp. karaoke he was. And they called my number out and everyone was looking for me and they couldn't find me so I missed out. But that's like, you know what I mean? It's my first ever trip, 2009, I remember it. We yeah, stayed in good. Bridlington. Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I've enjoyed every year that I've ever come here. It's a brilliant place to be. Great locals, great guys. Know a lot of them. Chat to all of them. Chat to anyone, you know. 
Fantastic and, uh, experience for those that have never done it. Yeah, we've it's, got one uh, guy coming up from Plymouth, but um, he's never even fished a competition before. But he's coming up with um, my uh, fishing partner, it goes bashing with me in the summer, Mike Comber. And um, he's it's gonna blow his socks off, I think. We, Personally, um, we've, I don't think he's seen anything like this. We've been given the nod by the cameraman, Nick. Because I think he thinks we're talking too much, but right. he's got a bite. <laughs> so is what he? we're going to do, we're going to let the cameraman go in, uh, in over. Yeah. we we'll leave see the what camera he's got. running see, and, and see how he's got. the camera and pan yeah, around. Let's go. And we'll watch the junket. He's got to have a bite now. He's got it all on him. All on him. It's nice to see him get a fish out. It's always nice to get a fish out while you're up here. I've had my one, I don't care if I'm blank now. Any good? It's a bit of weight, it might be weed. A bit of weight might be weed. That's hopefully not. You did get a bite off it though, and it is a, it's a glass tip, so you, uh, I would have thought you would have seen the bite very well. Bite detection on that rod is phenomenal. Wait. Wait. It's hopefully a fish and not weed. Hey! Hey! So we've all had a fish out today. They're not massive, but um, yeah, just Joseph's brother to have one out now. But it's all part and parcel, guys. One thing I will say. What is very, very important. It's taking the squid rather than the worm. Took the squid, that one, rather than the worm. Exactly the same as the one I had earlier on. Squid baits is, 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 is a key as well, for, especially for whiting. But um, you need to make sure your fish are in size, guys. You really do. It's very important that they're in size. Because if you bring them back and they're, they're not in size, they just put be put to the side. And at the end of the day, you can go back and, and it, it be, can be returned. But if you haven't got a measuring stick, I know I was in East Coast Tackle yesterday and they have got measuring sticks in there. Also, if anybody's ordering bait in that, I think the last time to order bait from Hooker's Baits is on Wednesday. And I believe Hazel has got the measuring sticks in there also, which he could probably send out for you. Very important to have those measuring sticks on the match, guys. And make sure the fish you're capturing are in, in size. I mean, that's a little bit undersized now, but at the end of the day, we're down here having a bit of a bit of fun, just a bit of a giggle, just trying to get a few fish out for the camera for you all. Um, to be fair, I'm fishing cod baits in a minute, and I can't see, I just can't, I'm not feeling it for cod, but you never know. It's not our coastline, don't know. Joseph, come over here and show your fish off now. Joseph Rainsford. You don't get to see this guy very much, but he's one of the parts and parcel of everything we do with Insee Angle Adventures. It's a big, it's a team. You've obviously got myself and Nick doing a lot of presenting and photography and stuff. And uh, a lot of hard work goes in by this man, but it's, it's, it's nice to get fish out, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No matter what the size, it's always good to get yeah, one. Yeah, just gets done. Job done. I'm but we'll get, you, get, a, get a photo quickly and we'll get back to fight another day. Joseph just blasting one out. We'll give it probably half hour, guys, and then we're going to uh, make our way back and get something to eat. It's been a long day. We've been out across the coastline today here, doing a bit of filming, doing a bit of uh, like general chit chat and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, tides approaching now. There's fish there. And there, at the end of the day. That weed, that weed will lay off, hopefully, over the next couple of tides. Ready for the weekend. That's all you can hope for, isn't it? And let down we go, go. Is that I got a bite, no? No? I don't know what they're doing, boys. They just put the camera in front of me and said sing, so I'm singing. But uh, it's very, very cold. Do you know what? I know a lot of you seen that video. I think 1,200 people saw that video this morning. Of me singing. <laughs> I'm gonna get him singing. Don't worry, because yeah. after he's had a few brandies, he can sing like Pavarotti. 
It's boredom. We're up there in the mornings, nothing to do. So up five o'clock, like this morning, what do yeah. we do? Yeah, then. Up at five, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, so darkness is about to come upon us any moment now. So we're just going to basically pack up the rods, go back and have a bit of dinner. Very long day today, up early this morning. Some of you have seen a bit of karaoke up past five, six o'clock, and then we had Ed off into Wivensea. Got some filming that done and some general bits and pieces for everybody for information rise, really. The, we get a lot of messages come through of everybody enjoying what they see, and it gives everybody a bit of hype and stuff ready for the weekend. And I think one of the main things, especially, is like Kev Brown would point out earlier on, it gives the people the opportunity to see the conditions of what the sea and that's like, so they know before they come up here what baits to bring. Because at the end of the day, if you, you think you want to go up here and have a target array, it's pointless coming up here and getting loads of cod baits and spending all the money on cod baits. You better all come up here being prepared of what you're going to do and what you're going to target. I'm not saying don't bring cod baits up, but if you're specifically going to target array more likely you're going to use different baits for it aren't you so uh yeah we try to do what we can and um, i'm sure we've got another long day tomorrow hopefully we try and get out we've got a busy one tomorrow we're going to go up and have a look at mapleton and do a couple of the other venues and that places where people can fish or have an efficient event before but i'm going to bring this rod in now uh, another thing i'd like to say it's very important guys carry a bag when you're fishing all right you got your bits and pieces and some rubbish, put it in a carrier bag and take it back to the caravan park and put, or put it in bins. There's a lot of public bins around, especially if you're fishing with and seeing that, there's bins near enough everywhere. So just make sure you leave the coastline clean and tidy, please, because it's, uh, it's a beautiful part of the, of the coastline um, around this neck of the woods. And it's just, it spoils it to see people leaving litter and stuff and that, you know what I mean? So it, it only takes a little bit of common sense, really. Carry a bag when you're fishing. 99% of anglers do it. But um, yeah, just want to remind everybody for it, please. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get on this rod now and see uh, what we can bring in. Feel it coming up over the bank. Don't think there's nothing on it. Less weed around over the top of the tide here at the minute, which is good. Long way out. Sort of trouble casting to the horizon, you've got to bring it back in. <laughs> Nothing on there, I don't think. Oh yeah, got fish on. As you can see here, guys, it's um, it's just a bit of a nightmare at the minute because of the weather we've had. But I've got another white in there. I mean, I'll show you. It's a lot smaller than the other one. I, the other one was, sweet. I think it would have been in size for the event if we were fishing the event with it. But. Um, it's just a nightmare, isn't it? I'm glad we don't get it like this down our way. Most of the time it's like mayweed. This is this is solid stuff here. It's, it's just uh it's got no cho choice. When you get it on, you've just got to walk up the beach. Just try and get the fish on the shoreline and just walk up the beach. But uh 
nightmare, isn't it? Look. Try and get it in quickly. There you go. So, here we have. Rest him down a minute. Whoa. White in. Okay, that one there is caught on squid. I find fish baits are perfect for it, really. If you're fishing specifically for whiting, you want to catch a fish. Squid, uh, bluey, any type of fish baits really do work well for whiting. Now, when I'm targeting big whiting down my neck of the woods, I'm, I use like running up and over rigs, really long traces. And I go up to like 607 or works, really, uh, because you get like a two, I think my biggest is 215. So you're talking like nearly three pound white and they're absolutely massive. And they'll take cod baits, you know what I mean? They're, they're massive fish. But this one here is only a tiny one, probably not inside, we're here. But we're gonna get him back now to fight another day. And hopefully he gets a bit bigger for another year for every, someone, all right? We're getting back now. And that's it. Another day on Albury Beach, fishing for targeting, whiting. I think between us, we've gone for cod, whiting, and um, flatties. So we've had a lot of whiting out between us all. So uh, there's a few fish about, guys. Hopefully the week hate lays off you all. And uh, we look forward to seeing you Thursday night with your dancing shoes on, ready for a big one.